another alphabet challenge update. This update is for November and December combined. I was lucky enough to get married and in the run into the day I promised my now wife that I will park making these videos and other content just for a small bit uh, to focus on the planning. Um, and then after the wedding a small holiday happened called Christmas meaning I didn't have my PC with an opportunity to record an update. Though, I'm back, and I've been working on the game in the background. So, let's get started. I just want to pause here just to say, I know this video is coming out in February. Um, due to some unforeseen circumstances, we've actually not been able to make a video in January. Um, January and February will come out in March, um, but the game's still been worked on in in the meantime, so yeah, uh, back to the video. The first feature that I need to update this time was to implement the level loading. In this game, Archaeology Rush, uh, players will enter different puzzle rooms, and each puzzle room is self contained. When a player reaches the end of the room, solving the puzzle, the next level needs to load. This means that we need a system which can recognize the room end and load the next level. This comes in three parts, the end sector, the level manager, and the new map. When a player reaches the end sector, a message tells the game manager, uh, and then the game manager records the player in position. Once the players finish the level and the level manager schedules the next level, the current level to be destroyed, and the new level will be instantiated. Um, and the new map is provided by the game manager. It took a couple of tries and bugs, but eventually I had more than one level. However, I didn't actually have created more than one level. And I didn't have any tools to make them, no puzzle ele elements. So the first tool or to create puzzles were doors. Doors which needed to move and slide upwards, like you would see in films like The Mummy. Goodbye, Benny. So I had different sections which would slide a door up and down, with each section being a tile in Godot. And then I added a collision box, which slides up and down along with the door sections. Um, and in setting this up, I realized that I'd actually need doors to be of different sizes. So I created a door creation tool. Uh, the tool runs whenever I click create, and it just sets up the door to a particular tile size, and it will generate it, filling the parameters and setting all the sprites correctly. So now that I have a door, I need something which opens it, um, and that is a switch. A switch is just a static body prefab, and this prefab has uh, an area 2D, which um, determines if it's pressed. Finally, uh, it has two collisions and sprites for when it's pressed or not pressed. Um, and now, to connect the switch and the door, and to add puzzles easily in the map, I knew I needed to over-engineer a new system, uh, which came to be named Connectables. Um, this contained two nodes, an AND and an OR node. The nodes have an array of switches, and at the end, something openable, like a door. Um, and in the case of the AND node, the array of the switches are checked that they are all pressed. Uh, or the OR node just checks if one of them is pressed and returns that correct state to the door. Um, so what, what this actually gives me is the ability to set up doors in such a way that a switch might need to be pressed to let somebody out before you. This can lead to situations where someone sacrifices their position to let everyone else get through, which is perfect for this kind of co couch co-op bargaining that I want as part of the puzzles. As a plus, switches could easily be expanded into NOR and NAND nodes later if I felt or feel that I need that. 
So now we have the basics of puzzles. I need an incentive for players to make those sacrifices. Um, and one of the design requirements that I made to solve this problem was to have different pickups. These pickups are artifacts which score or give money at the end screen. As a side note, I don't think I've ever actually explained in one of these videos how the scoring actually works or is designed to work. For each room a player leaves, their order is recorded. In a four player game, uh, first gets three points, second gets two points, and third gets one point, and fourth just gets nothing. However, those points are tallied at the end of the whole game. And for each artifact a player is lifted from the tomb, the player gets an extra point, up to four points. This means your artifacts can mean the difference maker, the bonus stars, so to say. Before that can happen, though, I needed the basics of the player inventory slash pickup system actually implemented. So to achieve this, I needed to add the new pickup nodes. Um, a pickup is a prefab, which has a collision and a sprite, which is really simple. And then the node takes the info type, which contains the possible treasure that the treasure node can be. Um, and then when the player collides with the collision, the player picks it up. Um, for the inventory, I added in a player inventory, which has four slots on the player controller. Once the player goes over to, pick, to its pickup node, the player tells the pickup controller, pick me up. Uh, the player controller checks its inventory array of treasure data to see if it has a room. If it does, it just returns true. If it doesn't, it nothing happens. Once the player goes over its pickup node, the pickup tells the player controller, pick me up. Um, and then the player controller checks its inventory array of treasure data to see if it has room for that treasure. If it does, uh, that player controller will say, yeah, I've got room. Take that information, and then once the node, the pickup node receives that, it destroys itself. If not, nothing happens, and the player just walks straight past. And then finally, I to actually add the UI, which is a simple four like panel with four textures for each slot. When the inventory updates, the UI updates with it, uh, which just left me with a basic inventory system. Um, and the aim for this is, as I test it and play with it, I'll understand how I want to use this more with everything else. Um, and this can then be moulded into more of a solid design as things come. So that wraps it up for the last two months. Hopefully, over the next month or two, I can get this game in front of other people. And eventually, it shouldn't be too long to get it released. Um, the next big step will kind of be getting the general flow working so that the maps can be strung together. Um, so, till next time. And remember, you can follow the progress of the game on Instagram, which will be starting back up, uh, would have started back up this week. Thanks for watching.